All right, guys. So uh, welcome once again to uh, BMW blog. Today we do have a, a very special surprise thanks to uh, BMW Group Classic in Munich. And our special guest today, it's uh, Ben Voss. Uh, he's uh, responsible for the BMW Classic in Munich cars. And he's going to take us actually behind the scenes, show us a few cars. We also have, you know, Nate Rich from uh, the BMW blog team. So Nate and I will be the co-hosts. We're going to ask Ben some questions. We're going to have Ben walk around and kind of show us what's special behind the scenes at BMW Classic. Ben, welcome. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you in Illinois and NYC. So we're here at in Munich. Uh, you hardly can see anything. But in fact, I chose a very good place with a good view to start with. And let me just switch cameras sure. uh, over there because this is the view from the first floor from our workshop. And uh, you can see quite some cars, but to see it better, I start going downstairs. All right. So in fact, what you see in here is one part of our workshop. Um, this is where we maintenance our own cars, which is happening here and here. We have two M5s here. So second gen E34. M5, that's a 3.6 liter, and then the, the V8 powered E39. And uh, in fact, what you don't see, and I can show you here if I make it up there, the, the reason why the car is on the lift is this sticker. Because the TÜV, the German authorities, it just expired. And this is the reason why it's here on the lift and it gets checked. And then next Monday, it will get the approval to get back on the road because this is a car or collection collection which we drive sometimes we take this also media drives we do photo productions video productions with this car and uh in fact we had this on the launch of the current m5 in order to have it aside with all those others this is our e34 you can see the front bumper up here in fact, I don't know what's happening to that car at the moment, but uh, yeah, I guess they'll fix it in a short period of time. <laughs> All right, sounds good. So this is, uh, this is very German. This is our tools, and it says BMW Spezialwerkzeuge, so special tools. <laughs> so they actually use those, right? They actually use those. Uh, in fact, for the, like, not, not, not perhaps for those cars, uh, for the newer cars, but in fact, for the older cars, uh, they need some special tools and this is when they get it. So this is one part of our um, workshop. In fact, there is another part right across it. Okay. Um, so this is the place where we mostly do the, the short-term maintenance stuff. Uh, so cars don't stay here for long. So for long-term projects, full restorations, which, which we do for our own cars and for customers' cars, we put them on, on the other workshop and then they will stay there a little longer. So then we have full restorations over there. So you have a full restoration workshop where you can basically, can you, so before we move on, can you take any restoration projects or they have to meet specific criteria? Um, no, we, it has to be, a, it has to be a BMW. <laughs> that's, okay, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the thing. No, we, we work on like, we have, what, what we do have our, our concept here and regarding our guys that work here. So we have very young, talented mechanics as well as uh, older, experienced mechanics. And what they do is that um, they have a lot of exchange between each other. Like the experienced, more experienced guys tell them how to work on the older cars and vice versa. So okay. that they have, okay, like, well, when it comes to electronics, the younger guys are having an advantage when they start and then they tell the other the older ones how to work on this as well so we do have some specialists like you can see those small bubble car iz over there mm -hmm. where for example Jarek, he's the specialist for our iz and yeah. but the, the people are working on it okay then we have uh we have some specialist guys for the motorsport cars that are working on those ones uh but in fact we can manage every bmw right from the first three slash 15 until um, let's say E39, E38 gen, um, sometimes a E46 M3 or even a first gen Z4 M model makes it into our workshop, but those are the newest ones, except the Z8. 
So if I'm a, so if I have an M1, let's say, and, and I want to restore it, can I just bring it to you guys or you're not available for every customer? No, we are available for each and every customer from all around the world. So in fact, okay. our customers, they really come from all around the world, especially when it comes to those high value cars, because customers want, want to have the cars worked on at the, let's say, heart of the classic brand. Mm -hmm. um, and they uh, trust us that we have like the best experience working on those cars. And this is when the cars get here. And in fact, um, we don't make any difference between like an M1 or uh, we also have E34s, 520s in our workshop from customers. Um, so we don't make, really make a difference on that. Uh, okay. What's the longest it, project that, that you guys worked on? Hmm? I mean, what's, what's the longest project time-wise that you've worked on? Uh, like a year, two years? Yeah, it depends. Uh, so like customers always get priority um, so when we're working on those projects, we really restart and then working on them. Uh, right. When it comes to our own cars, we sometimes make a break when our workshop stuff is so busy that mm -hmm. they say, okay, let's take a break on that. So we, and then we give priority to the customer's cars. The customer. So you okay. could really not put on, on a tech, but like one of the most, let's say, um, complicated restorations we did was the 507 of Elvis Presley. And this yeah, took us about that. two years. Two years, gotcha. Yeah, yeah I actually saw that one in uh, Pebble Beach. It was beautiful. Yeah. I Is there say. any special training that technicians have to go through to work for a Classic? No, there is not a, a special, like, let's say that they go on seminars uh, that are only for BMW Group Classic or for Classic cars. In fact, we count on their experience, what they did. So when you are working in those in this classic car segment, you meet, you meet a lot of people during the work. So we have, for example, one of our younger guys in the, in the um, motorsport part, he, did, um, he worked for a guy who raced them once and we met him and then sometimes he switched over to BMW Classic because we were pretty uh, sure that he is the right person to work us, but this is not, so we are choosing our, not choosing, but we get our stuff not on a special, let's say, process we do it, but we, we decide from person to person. Okay. Cool. All right. So you, yeah. Guys, are you afraid what's behind this one? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Let's let me open the door. You got me intrigued. Uh, yeah. So this is our truck, just right all the way behind. This is section okay. and this is, yeah, the entrance. Please excuse the noise it makes now. <laughs> no problem. All right. So okay. this is the main, uh, so this is the main facility, right? This is the main facility. This is the part, uh, in fact, this is the whole building. If I do an overview, this used to be, let me, Oh, so that's heaven. Hmm? So that's heaven. That's heaven. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is, in fact, this used to be the very first plant that BMW built in 1918. So in here, they did aero engines um, and like the small motorcycle engines up to 1922 when they sold this one. And then they moved to what is now the plant number one. But this is where, yeah, this is where the early days, where the beginnings really happened. And uh, now then we chose to build this one as a yeah, vault for our cars. In fact, what we will see and when we, go, we will stroll through it, this is hosting around 70 cars, 70 to 80 cars, which is a small piece of our collection. But it's like we try to showcase all different kind of models, uh, different eras and to cover this one. And... Um, so Ben, before you get started, let me let me ask you this because we're gonna get with the cars, and then uh, I'm yeah. gonna forget. Can we settle the the story behind the BMW logo colors? I mean, I've been writing about that for quite some time, but there are always different stories on where the colors <laughs> came flag. from. So from I just want to hear it. So I just want to hear it from you, basically. Okay, let me let me do this on the backdrop of the kidneys of our. Okay. Kidneys. 
um, and then we can swap to something else. Um, sure. So this, this is our kidney display and I will move to one of our icons, which is the O2 and then I can show it around here. So okay. in fact, you can see the blue and white colors and um, the thing behind is that BMW merged out of several companies. One of them used to be the Rapp Motorenwerke. Rapp is German for horse. So back then Rapp had a horse in here and then it says Rapp Motor. And as BMW merged out of it, they tried to modify this logo. And instead of Rapp, they used the Bavarian Motorworks or Bayerische Motorenwerke. And instead of the horse, they put in the Bavarian colors, but in the different view. So Bavarian is white and blue and this and BMW is blue and white, not to get in trouble with the Bavarian authorities. Uh, okay. And you can always remember like the blue is below the B, the M is the middle and the white. So the thing with the propeller in front of a blue and white sky is simply a marketing story that came up in the late twenties. So let's say 10, 15 years after the, the logo was done. Uh, so this is the true story behind it, that it was okay. simply a modification of one of the previous companies that BMW merged out of. Understood. It's not okay. as tiny as, as the propeller, but it's true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a great story with the propeller. I, I always thought it was a good story and it looked good also on the marketing material as well. Yeah. Oh, very Good. cool. Uh, All right. So where so where do you yeah, want to start? I can, I can. So this one is the let's say fifties section, starting with the Elvis. But uh, as we are talking some history, I will not want to miss this little car. So everybody knows the Isetta. Everybody knows the O2. Uh, people tend to forget about the seven hundred, but in fact, this was the car that saved BMWs. <clears throat> So, you know, in the, late, in the late 50s, BMW got into troubles and this was the car that earned the money to develop the O2 and the Neue Klasse series. So if we wouldn't have this one, uh, there wouldn't be probably not an independent BMW brand today. And uh, the that it, try, it tends to get forget forgotten is it doesn't have a kidney grill and it doesn't have a Hofmeister King and it has the engine in the rear and it's a, it's a flat twin boxer motorcycle engine. So it's not very like typical attributes like a kidney grill, inline six and Hofmeister King. And this is try, people try to forget or tend to forget uh, this, this car. But it's, mm -hmm. it's really crucial for the history of the brand. Yeah, very interesting. Good. We, we talked about Elvis 507. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are a little proud that we have here like more than 1% of the whole production volume of 507s because this makes three and the whole volume was 251 cars ever built. Okay. So you have three of them. What's the, what's yep. the value of a 507 today? It de depends on the history of the car. It depends on the condition for sure. Uh, but good ones sell on auctions between starting at 1.6, 1.7 million euros, and then up to, I don't know, two, three, I guess a very special car owned by John Surtees made over $3 million uh, last year, kind of. It's pretty, it's pretty affordable, huh? <laughs> it's, it's pretty affordable. Yeah, the, the funny thing is that back then, when it was new, it, the price was 27,000 Deutschmarks, or N500, uh, 27,500 no, 27, marks, which was the same value uh, as for a house in Munich. Interesting. And today, a house in Munich costs 1.5 million euros. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's uh, both developed the same, in fact. The same, yeah. no, so but, you could but invest talking, in either one. Talking about BMW classic cars, um, this is the most valuable serial production classic cars uh, from BMW, okay. from the brand, yeah. Gotcha. Very cheap. Okay. So I have to admit it's a little tight in here because we have some space or some issues with, this, with the space at the moment mm -hmm. because we had to clean uh, another room. Uh, this is something else very special. Is that the 328? 
That's the 328, but this is a special body. This is the Berlin Rome Roadster that was built for a race that never happened. So Germany and Italy wanted to have a race but from Berlin to Rome. And so they asked the German manufacturers, not only BMW, to build race cars for that. So they built this car uh, together with uh, Carrosseria Touring Super Leggera. You can see the, the badge on here. Uh, so uh -huh. can you see it? Is it okay with the reflections? Yeah, yeah. I can see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So they built this one um, on the basis of a 328 sports car. They tuned the engine up to 120, 130 horsepower. It was a two liter inline six. And um, those cars were very successful. Like all the special body cars um, on the 328s, like the coupe made the win in 1940 at the Millimilia. This one finished as well. Then the, the, another roadster, which is not here at the moment, uh, finished uh, second and third. So in fact, those were quite successful back then. And uh, those, all these special body 328s are regarded, uh, we talk of them as our crown jewels. It's beautiful. Does it have aero covers on the rear wheels as well? Yes, it has. It has like nearly fully covered. Can you see it? It's, it's, uh, yeah, I, need I, to, see it, yeah. I need to take the other side. You can see it from the other side better. It's even got a roundel on, on there. Beautiful. Yes. That's yeah. really cool. That's beautiful. Well, then I need to just... Luckily, I don't have any buttons on my trousers. <laughs> so I won't stretch anything. Otherwise, I cannot... I'm not allowed to return on Monday. Oh, you're not really? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's just joking. Um, so then we continue with, Never with the 50s. Like okay. all those... In Germany, they are called Baroque Engel. So Baroque Angels as their design back then was a little outdated already when it came into the market. Um, but it was the approach of BMW when they re-entered the car manufacturing business after World War II. The approach was to build big cars uh, to earn the most money out of one car. So like the premium approach, um, which was back then pretty tough because the economy was not growing too fast and the people are, were looking for smaller cars and even if they could sell it they did not make out make much out of one of those cars so this got a little wrong but uh, in fact those are pretty exceptional cars they were the first ones to feature a light or an aluminium v8 motor and uh, they were used as taxis in munich this is in mm -hmm. fact a taxi that was used in munich during the 60s it has over 1 million kilometers on the clock. And you can see it has a license plate, so it's still working. We just restored it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you too much of this because next week on Thursday, we will have a new video out on YouTube, on our channel, a new episode of Inside BMW Classic. And this is the protagonist of this video next Thursday. So, so by the way, take, okay. take, check out our YouTube channel. We have quite some new video material on it. Uh, perhaps you like it. We love it. We actually checked it out and, and we encourage everyone to do so. I mean, it's, there's some right. really spectacular cars and content. So this is a police car, a German police car. It, it was, uh, this is a replica of a police car that was in a very popular Bavarian TV series back then. It's Isar uh, Zwölf. So this is for the Germans. Uh, and uh, then we have our party 501. And I say party because it has a really special feature. We decided to have um, yeah, a special feature on this one. It's very Bavarian and does, <laughs> don't take it too serious. So this is a beer car. So this is where you can have beer from the tap. So you can pull this one out, put in the barrel at the back of the, the so at the back seats. This is where you, the back seats used to sit, and then you can put the barrel in there, and then you can party with a barocking. Did you ever use this one at at a classic event where you pour beer out of that? Yes, we used we it quite quite often. Not not within the last two years, but from time to time we still pull it out and then have some beer from the 501. That's very cool. <laughs> So, All right, so what's, guess, what's this one on the right? Hmm? 
So on you the go right, into the mini one. section. Huh? Uh, yes. So we do one. have some mini. So we have a mini lane. Let's call it like this: a mini aisle. For okay. sure, we connect collect minis from before the let's say BMW era to showcase the different products they had, uh, mm -hmm. and then now since the BMW era, we collect every and each different model like we do with okay. the BMWs as well. Gotcha. Same counts okay. for Rolls Royce for sure. Cool. So, so this is so we already saw the E34 and the 39, and this is the 28, like the very first M5. Mm -hmm. As well here, this car is, hasn't been too long in our collection. Um, so we have an M5 in our collection, uh, which is stored or which is in, on exhibition in the museum. And we decided that we want to have another E30, E28 M5 to drive. And this is we, what we purchased this car for, like, I guess, three to four years ago to have mm -hmm. one road going car to keep it on the road because it's difficult to get the other one out of the museum. And uh, this is such a crucial car for the M history that uh, we have to have one at the museum all the time. Because it was the fastest family sedan at the time, right? Yes. And in fact, this one is a very, let's say, you can, you can, those were always called the sleepers, but this one has the body kit for, for, of the M535. So you could get them without this body kit, but stuff you can see here and on the side. Um, this was the fastest one and it's still is a lot of fun. And it had, it featured the engine out of the M1 with a little increase of power. So this yeah. one was 286 horsepower while the M1 had 277. That's insane for decades ago, yeah. <laughs> That's a fun yeah. fact. <laughs> yeah, so if you want a powerful car, you buy the M5, not the M1. No, this was just <laughs> different back then. Was... We still take the M1 though. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, daily at the M1 is a, is a good topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have uh, those, and this car is, it, it is not in a perfect shape, but uh, like you see the leather seats are a little worn, but I love this pattern on the, on the seats, like those, Beautiful. the massive, the massive leather with the M colors in it. And uh, like the, the seat adjustment, which oh, see, is yeah. taking quite some space in the, in the middle section. Mm -hmm. Another fun fact, which is just casually lying around here. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, let me tell you that we have good security on site and this is why we have all the keys inside the cars. <laughs> all the keys are inside. Huh? <laughs> so uh, talking about the M5s, so uh, there are ridiculously many versions, different versions regarding um, the interior aspects regarding colors because those M5s, they were really close to being handmade within the M GmbH uh, as they were the first ones. So you could easily order everything you wanted to. You could order purple seats. I don't know. So long before BMW Individual was introduced, this one was really uh, possible because they had to install it nearly by hand anyway so you could choose out of different materials whatever you wanted to gotcha very cool. good so uh, what's um, next what's next e38 uh, i already told you this is in fact this is one of the last model lines that came into our responsibility parts wise um so from time to time, we take over different model lines. So the last ones were the E38, the E39. And just recently, so by beginning of 2020, we already got responsible for the first Gen Z4s, exterior and interior parts. So this is, at a certain point, we change. So we, we take over the responsibility for part supply. And this is also while we have those let's say newer cars in our collection here to showcase this one as well uh, to have the let's say future classics on here this is also a story so, so this is a future project of our motorsports team this is a shell of a m3 group Ooh, a car yeah so this is really uh you see it's it's still dirty it's nothing uh nothing really on it at the moment but we keep it here and then if we have time uh then we try to or not we try but we will then 
basically bring it back on track. Gotcha. So you want to see what's with this one? Yeah, let's take a look at that. Why is the hood open? Why is the hood open? I guess you know, Horatio. <laughs> I can open it. Uh, oh, yes. The one, yes. I just saw the, so the they, recent photos, yeah. So that's the V12, huh? Uh, V16, sorry. That's, that's the V16, exactly. V16. That's the Project Goldfish car. Uh, oh. This is back in 87 mm -hmm. when Mr. Fisher, who was uh, responsible, responsible for, the, for the 12 cylinder engines within the company got, got asked by his boss uh, to build a V16. And he said, okay, just give me some time and two V12s and then I'll make a V16 out of it. So in fact, what he did is when with the two V12s, uh, let me try to show you. So after one, two, three, four, he, this section, he cut it, the engine, okay. both, both our old wheat cells. And then he, from the one, he put, got this section and then he got the other section from the other engine. So he mounted those ones together. So this is not a, like a V12 extended to, uh, with 16. two cylinder banks, but in fact it's, it's two V12s, but cut it in the middle and not right here. Interesting. And as they didn't have, yeah. Hmm? Sorry. Was there any reason why it, uh, it didn't make into production? Uh, I guess one of the reasons is lack of space for the radiators. It's, it's tight. Yeah. I could not, I could not uh, imagine that people would have liked those <laughs> air intakes. And uh, what is more, I guess people would expect would expect from a seven series bigger space in the nice trunk space, than this one yeah, in sure. fact the spare wheel is missing here if you put in the spare wheel there's even less space so but you see the 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 rear vents in the fenders that's that's kind of what makes it cool today right i think if you were to build this today in limited numbers people would actually buy it because it's it's a really cool design it's very aer aerodynamic and everything else yes yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of true. But in fact, uh, this was never meant for serial production. This was one of those projects is to, to, to check whether what is possible and what would make sense. So gotcha. um, Mr. Fischer, who just turned 80, I met him in February and he told me some stories about the car. And he said that the sound is gorgeous. I cannot start it because this one doesn't have the keys inside. <laughs> And, did, um, you, did you did you ever drive it on the road? Uh, he yeah yeah this car was driven on the road uh, oh, yeah. while testing. It had okay. a it had a registration, a temporary uh, registration, and it did over a thousand kilometers. It was also shown to the board of management back then. Okay. Um, and but it that never really really was planned to have it in serial production only because they thought okay it's getting heavier. And we get more output, but it doesn't really, the balance is bad because it's, 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 it's heavy on the front. Uh, so they decided to go with the V12 because the V12 was totally sufficient. Mm, gotcha. Okay. So while, while talking about the goldfish, there's another gem in here. Uh, that this GT? One, that's the MG, M3 GT. That's one of 356 ever built. All of them were built or were painted in British racing green. So you could get only this one, this color. Uh, so this was built for homologation purposes. And what makes it different on the outside is the front splitter. Mm -hmm. So this one was, you might see it here. This mm -hmm. section is adjustable. So you can push it back or pull it forward. Um, and it had, <clears throat> A higher output. So this one was the 286 horsepower version on the base, and this one had 295. And was this just a European had, version? Uh, sorry, what? Was it only sold in uh, Europe? It was only sold in Europe, and uh, this had the the S50 engine, so not okay. the later one, the the, the 321 um, version, but it was based on the earlier M3 version. And it's got a nice interior. 
like the, the Alcantara gorgeous. together. The seats, the seats are beautiful. BMW Motorsport badges. The but seats are beautiful. Different. Go ahead, Nick. So what's car? I was just going to say, what kind of differences between like the lightweight and the GT were there? It is they basically um, not the same car, but the lightweight was uh, the lightweight was the the US version, wasn't it? Very close. And the uh, the lightweight did uh, did not have the S50 engine, but the M50 engine. So the E36s in the US did not came with the S badged engine, but with a tuned serial production so not not m car um engine that was caused by the emission laws back then understand good very interesting beautiful so, so the lightweight was tried to compensate the less power that they had in the u.s version gotcha it's, uh, yeah, what is more? I just I, I g gave you a peek already <laughs> on the motorsport cars. Mm. Let's take a so look at that. as I said, so you saw the shell of the M1. So you can see this this place is is hands on. Uh, we we store those cars in here um, in order when they are pulled back into the workshop. Uh, we have visitors in here with guided tours, not at the moment for sure. But uh, and then people really can experience uh, that this is a lively, pl lively place uh, where cars are pulled out all the time. So every day um, I come here, different cars come here and uh, and different cars disappear uh, from time to time because from here they go into the workshop, they go on an exhibition somewhere else, they go on an event, um, and this is why they're changing the whole time. This is. This is yeah, such a, a, an example. This is the BT52. So this is the championship car from 83 with the legendary turbo engine, the BMW turbo engine. Mm -hmm. And this is the, this is the chassis um, where Nelson Piquet sat in when he crossed the line at Kialami and uh, winning the world championship title. And uh, we just recently did a revision of the engine. So... What was, the power, what was the power output? The power output at this special car is at the moment it's only 620 to 650 horsepower. But this is okay. like when it started and up to the Hockenheim race, which was mid season kind of, the car had 650 horsepower, which is this uh, spec. But we installed, after the revision, we installed another turbocharger when, with the Monaco Grand Prix spec, which, has, which is a little smaller, but has a, a smaller turbo lag. And um, this is yeah, a little better for the engine because we have some spare parts for the engine. We have a spare engine, but we don't want to blow it anyway. But, but the potential of the engine was crazy. You know that uh, at the end, those engines made over four, 1,400 horsepower. Now, this is the one that was rumored that the, they were looking for used blocks, right? Exactly. Um, so the rumor goes very far that they were just like chasing them on the junkyards and everywhere. But there is a true background behind because they were looking for engine blocks that have gone through many heat circles in order that the the material has less tension on it. So this is the reason why they did this one, but they did so many, mod so many modifications on those blocks that you could really say that this is a rumor and it has some true aspects, um, but they, the rumors, they go so far that they really, they, that they, um, I don't know, beat up the, the, um, the engine blocks, they threw it at some, against the wall or something. I've read so many things about it. Uh, so, in fact, this back then, Formula One was not so technical as it is today, but it was already very professional. So, parts of the rumors are simply not true. Yeah. Good. Cool. Um, this is the junior team, the 320 Group 5 car, another car which we just finished last year. Uh, this car stood in our collection for quite some time unused and in a bad shape 
and when we had uh, the paint removed in a, and now it's getting difficult for me. So those are the baths of acid you just had, you, you dip the, the bodies into to get the paint away. What's the proper English term for that? So um, in, when you do a restoration and you put the, you dip the, the chassis into a, an acid to remove the color in fact. So when it came out of this, nearly the whole rear section was gone because it was so rusty. So the, the, the car went through a whole rebuild and this is the final version now. And uh, the car got back on the track last year in Hockenheim at the final race of the DTM last season. Mm -hmm. I think I saw some photos here, it looks beautiful also. There goes the CSL. There goes the CSL. In fact, to be honest, this is not the original car. We have the original car or one of those original race cars. This is a replica, which we put on a racetrack quite often, which is used as a, for taxi drives on race events. Um, and then we choose to build up a replica, which is hardly, uh, it, it, no, it's hard to separate from the original because it's really true to the original. Um, but yeah, we use this from time to time. Hopefully some time again this year, already we don't know we wait so all those cars are waiting desperately for their for uh, to go out for the, on the, on the, the DTM. yeah and this one is the m3 2.5 liter version so you can mm -hmm. separate it from the the bigger front splitter and the adjustable rear wing i can go a little more. I guess some of the people want to see the interior as well. <laughs> so that, that's the rear wing we are talking about. Talking about wings, mm -hmm. there's another big wing from the Batmobile serial production. Right behind him. And let me open. So this is <laughs> what an M3 DTM car looks like. I love the minimalism of it. Good. Very, very cool. I don't think I've seen one inside. I've only seen the outside of it in person. Good. So, Arejo, you are not asking about the M, co M colors. <laughs> well, I, I was going to, but then I remember that I actually wrote an article last month, and it was based on some quotes from uh, uh, Mr. Nerpach. Yes. So, I basically got the full story, but if you if you tell me that it's different, I'm curious to hear it. I mean, um, no, 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 no. The, the story is true. So, so what, what, what was your version? Was your version like the, the red so, for race, the blue for BMW and the purple for the mixture of both? Or was no, it the so basically they wanted to use the, the idea was that when he came over from, from Ford, he was trying to bring Castrol in as a sponsor. So he had to use a combination of the colors that will match the color on Castrol as well, because they were trying to bring them in as being the sponsor of the BMW Motorsport. And it never yeah. worked out. And basically, you know, they didn't come in as a sponsor, but, you know, BMW marketing team liked the colors and the logo and, it, and they just stuck to it. So yeah, that's kind of that's... the whole thing. Now, there, there is a transition in between colors that, that was explained and also, but you know, initially they really wanted to show Castrol that it's very close to their logo and they should come in and bring money. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that, that could be true as well. Nobody has a 100% proof, but uh, I won't, never ever in my life won't say that Jochen Nerpars is saying something wrong because he's one of my big heroes. He's such a great guy. He's a great guy. I actually met him, uh, I met him two years ago in, uh, in Le Mans in France. And we talked about it, but then I also I also went back to Alex Sheremet from BMW Romania. So he actually reached out yeah. to 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 Jochen to kind of confirm this. So that's why I know that it came from him directly. So um, yeah, I'm I'm sure it's almost true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 sounds valid in every case. Yeah. yeah. So so what's what's, what's the bike next guys, to it? The bike. Yeah. That's the, the most successful, which has come, become the most successful bike for BMW. So that's the, the first 
GS, that's the R A T G slash S. Uh, back then, it was, there was a slash in there as well. Um, yeah, this is when BMW in the 80s was struggling to compete with all those Japanese competitors in the bike sector. Okay. And, um, and they decided to, to get in a new sector which hasn't been really explored by any of the brands. So the G stands for Gelände, which is off-road, and S stands for, stands for Straße, which is road. Uh, so this is the a bike that was capable of doing both and yeah they invented a new sector in the bike business and the gs is still the most successful bike at bmw and uh, i guess volume wise every year uh all over all the all um in the whole motor uh, motorcycle sector mm -hmm. so, so here, here's a side note uh so i was just watching so there is this uh this show on showtime and it's called billions it's basically all about rich people, you know, doing the whole stock market. And in this new episode that came out, basically they're both riding a uh, GS, uh, you know, new version of the BMW bike. So uh, it was kind of cool to see, you know, the the GS being featured there. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I have to watch it. I don't know if they if if they if it's aired in Germany as well, but I have to check there's that. There's that really good documentary series called The Long Way Down too. Mm -hmm. Yes, that a long way is. down and long way round with uh, mm -hmm. what's the actor's name, like from Star Wars and uh, Ewan McGregor. Yes, yep, yep, yep. Ewan McGregor He's a huge and fan, his yeah. best best friend doing the trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and talking about motorcycles, this car has a motorcycle engine. This yeah. one's super rare. Yeah, yeah, in fact, this is one of two. <laughs> this is, this I is saw the other one in Monterey a few years back. Ah, okay. That's the white one with the with the grid number on it. Yep. Yes. That's the one that. Uh, so the one that you saw was the one that uh, did the championship in hill climb in 1960 with with Hans Stuck, so the father of Hans Joachim Stuck. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the second one that they built. They were just only built for the purpose of hill climbing. It had it is rear engined, uh, uh, 700 cc engine uh, uh it's pretty light weight it has a m minimalistic interior mm -hmm. basically it has just the ref counter this one is for yeah rallying actual stuff and then it has a small table here i don't know if you can see it which translates the rpm into K kph <laughs> <laughs> And the sticker below says range of about 200 kilometers. So you can see they did a, put a lot of effort on lightweight stuff. So you can see all those holes they drilled into the frame um, in order to save weight. Good. Um, yeah, should we... To go over to another let's call it sleeper uh, so this looks like a usual facelift e34 but perhaps by the license plate you can tell the engine that's the 540 that's the v8 engine and, um, so the top shelf model uh, except the m5 back then What's, what's, what's the color, color name? Yeah, <laughs> what's the color name? <laughs> oh, 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 Horatio. So now you're getting, that's, that's tough. <laughs> Let me check. It is Malediven Blau. Malediven so Melodives Blau. Blue. Wow. I've never seen it before. Can, can you still get it from the uh, individual catalog? I was just going <laughs> to say, make no, 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 this was, this was not an individual color. <laughs> This was this was available. It was available. Okay, yeah, just was an individual. So yeah, no, I don't think that's an individual color. I think they can do anything if you if you pay them, honestly. Yeah, for sure. So this is like it's a very bright interior as well. Mm -hmm. It is so. It is not. It it's it's an automatic transmission. 
-hmm. So those, the, the manuals are even rarer as well yeah. and still looked after. So if you find, if you find a 540 uh, with manual gearbox, this is a kind of, not unicorn, but it's rarer than the M5, in fact. Yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous. We talked about the CSL. <laughs> we did, yeah, we did a little bit. I always love the wing and that CSL. That's this, yeah. And those additional air intakes. And uh, that's, the, that's the latest version. So they did several uh, evolution versions of the CSL. So this is the mm -hmm. latest one with the big wings and the 3.2 liter engine. And this is such a blast to drive and to hear. Because they, as I said, they, they use less insulation on the car as well. And at a certain limit, at a certain point of the refs, the whole car begins to scream at you and which is, yeah, bringing you a lot of joy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, I guess you know this car. <laughs> yeah, so that's that, the one that, um, yeah, we've that's been- That's the one uh, you just featured. I know, it was actually, I've, the first time that I've seen it, honestly, I don't think I've ever came across the car. I mean, I was in your- BMW Classic a few times, but- um... Yeah, this one was, uh, yeah, this was got hidden in a storage somewhere else. We put it out once, as far as I can remember, once before in 2018 for a car drive. Um, but uh, yeah, this is very special. And in fact, I, you don't really have to like the color, but uh, our approach back then was in the 90s, we ordered this car, especially for the collection, to showcase 20, 30, 40 years later, what was possible back then and what was not so much uh, on the road back then as well. Because if you now remember an E36 3 Series, you know the, those cars in the different popular colors like black mm -hmm. and white and all that stuff. But you probably never see a one in uh, Falchen Blau Metallic. So that's so violet blue, blue B, right? But blue is more purplish, I guess. Purplish, yeah. And the inside? Yes. The inside is a two-tone version of purple and purple. Okay. I, could, yeah, I mean, it I looks could. so it looks wild I in the photos. They did the individual uh -huh. on the nice. handle. Nice. Yeah, and that's yeah, <laughs> a variation on purple on purple. Very interesting. I've only seen the photos. I've never seen a video of the car, but I've seen the photos last week and I, and I had to share them. I mean, it was quite unique. Yeah, even yeah. The, the shift boot and shifter handle are colored. That's yes, interesting. and, the, and the, the handbrake handle as well. Uh, you cannot see it, but the handbrake is as well. Hmm. Yep. So, for sure, we have to have a Z8. Just yeah, gorgeous. Of course. Yeah. Right next to... E24, that's a 635 non-M, so that's mm -hmm. the M30 engine, not the M1 engine in it. And now we have to, yeah, I have to pay attention that I don't just like crush anything. That's our two one-offs, that's the BMW Garmisch, which was recreated last year. And uh, the 2800 GTS made by Frua. This is one of three, which we just rest, uh, finished restoring last year as well. This one was, yeah, this was a suggestion by the designer of Hua, but it never really uh, made it into serial production because it was based on the E9, so on the coupe, which was already the, the CSL. Mm -hmm. um, but BMW more or less was fine with the design of their own coupe, so they, uh, they did not take this one. That's a very early version of the E3, so the first big limousine, the, um, the father of the 7 Series, let's call it like this. And then most of you know the second one, so the E30 M3, of course, but yeah. perhaps, perhaps today we can talk about the triple three. Mm. That's the South African car. Version. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the car that was built uh, 204 units only for the South African markets because the South Africans decided, as they did not get the M3, they decided to have their own top range 3 Series. So they did a 
cooperation together with, you can see the wheels now, Alpina, and together with the BMW Motorsport GmbH. So they installed the M30 engine, so the big six cylinder, 3.2 liter, and put this one in here, and it's a nice clean black interior. Uh, so they decided not to go with the four cylinder, but rather take the six cylinder. And uh, just as a proof, here it is. You can see the Alpina air intake. Can you see the, the Alpina written on it? I don't know, uh, I can see it a little bit closer. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah, now, now we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so he was using was parts from Alpina basically, right? They were using, yeah, they, they did it together with Alpina and uh, BMW M and themselves. Mm -hmm. So they sourced the best out of three worlds. <laughs> yeah. Let's say like this. And uh, yeah, this is, this is one of the special cars uh, BMW South Africa built for their, only mar for their own market. They did the same with the first seven series. Yeah, when I saw they, an article on that yes, yesterday. Mm -hmm. When they chose the M1 engine over the turbocharged engine that was used in the other version. Yeah. So the South Africans always had love for special cars. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we uh, should so, wrote a story on, on the 7 Series yesterday. We did a, a story on that 7 Series, which was cool. So, yeah, on the racing series as well, yeah. yeah. And uh, this one is a pretty dusty M5. <laughs> Um, and it just arrived yesterday, I guess. And uh, we could, this is a good example to talk about. You, you can see the small sticker, Handel, which means nothing else than trading. Okay. So, so this car, by the way, US spec, um, our colleagues that are in the trading department of Classic, so these are the guys that sell classic cars to our customers. They look for cars as agents on the market and uh, all this stuff. And we have this one in our collection and we have a few more of those because those are pre-serious test cars. And okay. what we try to do is we try to get a registration for these cars again because as they are test cars or were pre-serious test cars back then, you only got a registration for a certain period of time. And then it would uh, not be valid anymore and you could not re-register it. So they're trying with the German authorities to get this one registered because we, only, we always have, we also, no, we already have customers bidding on this car to get this one. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, it looks in great wow. shape, so. <laughs> I'm sure we'll go for a pretty penny. Yeah, yeah it has some, but you, you can see that it was tested and you can see that it was properly taken over because you, can you see the outlines of this sticker here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Arcing mm -hmm. some spots some from, from stones and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they did a thorough work on uh, re-getting the car back again. Yeah, cool. and I guess this is a good transition to the M1. And not only one M1, but another one. Oh yeah, black one. This don't see many black here. ones, yeah. Don't see many, yeah. Yeah, I usually no, see red and white. Is, this is this is a dark blue. Oh dark blue, sorry. Oh. Dark, yeah, yeah, it's blue, yeah. The, the always goes for a black, but it's 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 a dark blue one. Mm -hmm. So this is one of three that we have uh that are road going. And, That's the one uh, that you media yeah. drives sometimes, right? Exactly. This one, the white one and uh the red one. And the funny thing is that, not, not funny, but if, if we put it out, so the two years ago, we had 40 years of BMW M1. So we put those cars out quite often this year and sometimes in like three. And after in the, at the evening, sometimes when we had to refuel the cars, I, I helped the guys from the workshop. So, and then you recognize that each and every M1 has a certain or a slight different character. So because they were more or less hand-built as well, and so they are handling a little different, always good, but a little different, everyone. Um, the AC is working better on the white one as on the black one. The rear axle is acting differently. So the, the differential is acting different to the white one. It's funny to see what uh, the small changes do on this car. Hmm. 
So the Z1 with the sliding Z1. doors down. Is it is it sliding doors in German? Oh, I can't hear you. Uh, I said, what's the story behind the sliding door? Yeah, the, the story behind the sliding door, behind the whole Z1 is that, uh, in fact, it was not meant as a production car back then, but rather did by the BMW Technik GmbH, a department uh, who is just, is it a, a factory of making research and trying to get new concepts done. And this is what they did with, with the Z1. They simply set up this concept and uh, yeah, the board of management quite liked it. And so they took it over for serial production and they tried to get different, um, different uh, approaches. And this was as well with the sliding doors. So they said, um, why don't we try this one and try to get this one road registered so you can drive with doors open and then have a maximum, let's say open air feeling. And uh, yeah, it was allowed. So you could drive them like this with the doors down. It is the reason why there are no sliding doors like this anymore is uh, it's not that easy to enter the car because it is quite high so yeah. to enter. But it still is a good show always. Yeah, and it, it takes some adjustment. If you need to adjust something at the doors, yeah, you need to really... No, you need not only a very experienced mechanic, but a guy that has really, that is not too, let's say, well, that is very patient, let's say it like this. <laughs> Good. So this is a line of O2. This is a very rare full convertible. Then the top mm -hmm. model of the very first three series, the E21, the 323i. Mm -hmm. So the first one with the six cylinder engine, inline six in the, in the three series. <clears throat> Another Z8, uh, Z1, sorry. Mm -hmm. That's the second to last ever built. That's 7999 out of 8000. And um, never seen and let me come to a. No, that's a very special one. And, uh, and then we have a very special car that is not that common as well. That's the 1600 GT convertible. This is one of two ever built and the second one doesn't exist anymore. Is this the one that was recently finished up and being restored? Yes. So let me open this one up. So the thing is, so that the, the model itself, the BMW 1600 GT was basically a glass from the brand that BMW took over. And um, you can still, uh, you're able to hear me as well? Yep. Okay, so, yep. and when BMW took over the brand Glass, Glass still had a contract with the body company, which was Fuhr in Italy back then, to take over the, the chassis. So they finished this car, uh, they installed the BMW 02, the M10 engine, and named it 1600 GT. And then they thought that for the American market, they would need a convertible. So what they did is then they, they cut down the roof on two cars, and then they tested it. One got crashed during tested and got then scrapped, and this one survived and went to several ownerships until it got in our ownership in the 90s. And... Um, what is very special about this car is this car was restored by our trainees. So in the plant in Dingolfing, which is the biggest plant except Spartanburg, um, they have a workshop for the trainees. And the first thing the trainees do when they join BMW, they come into the workshop and they start working on project cars, on classic cars. And we tried to get uh, glass cars as well because Dingolfing was the home of glass. And sometimes the trainees tell their grandfathers that they are restoring a car that their grandfather probably mounted back then in the 50s and 60s. And so this is a project that was done by the uh, trainees at the BMW plant, which is making us proud and them as well. And we always have at least one or two cars in their workshop to get restored. So there are other projects going on as well, which we will present in one or two years. 
It's beautiful. Good. Very cool. So, and then we are back again with the purple E36 next to the red M1, which is the third of the three I told you about. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, guys, did I forget something? A very special car that you that you haven't seen now. Which one? Ah, I'm not sure, yeah. but perhaps yeah. some engines. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, I think we've seen all the cars. You did have a few. Cars. I think you did have a few cool ones back uh, back in the day. There, like uh, some of them, they were featured in movies. I think you had one from the James Bond movie, a Seven Series. Exactly. Uh, you had you had one that was a uh, the one with bullets in it. I mean, there were there were a bunch of crazy ones out there. Yeah, the the Mission Impossible from the Mission yeah. Impossible episode, different ones. Yeah. yeah, that we have we have, don't have it here, but from time to time we get it. Uh, we get a few requests, or we got a few requests on the James Bond cars, until the the the, uh, the new James Bond was postponed. And I, but I guess we get another request on that car when the movie will come out. Yeah. Um, this is a very interesting thing. So I can show you here. This is the very, very first BMW Boxer engine. So this mm -hmm. is not the first type of engine, but this engine is the very first ever built in 1920. Mm -hmm. You can see, perhaps you can, can you read the 25001 yeah. below the BMW? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the proof that this is the first one. This is because it's, it was built in 1920. So this year we celebrate 100 years of Boxer engine. And luckily we found this one um, at a collector near Munich. And in fact, this one was used for decades as a water or as a water pump in, at a farm. But not only water, but on, also... Yeah, what do you pump in in a farm as well? Like the, I don't know the German, the, the English term. Like it was for waste, in fact. <laughs> I see, I But see, then gotcha. now it, it got back and this is not restored. This is the way it, it was found and uh, it's kept in this. In the same condition. Yeah. And then this is the, the, the first, let's say, the first legendary inline six of BMW. That's the one that was installed in the 328, like the two liter inline six with um, 80 horsepower's output in 1936. Some really big carburetors on top. Yes. So the reason for that, or they they try to have, so what a, what the intention the intention was first to have a cross flow cylinder head. But BMW simply did not have the capacities and the money back then to develop a complete new cross-flow uh, cylinder head. So this is why they had this semi cross-flow um, solution. But you have those two ones well, so that you can have those. Uh, I know, I, I don't know a better translation, but the, it's, it's a Hemi engine. So it has this this dome in the uh, in the interior what is it called help me guys um, <laughs> um, the interior so, so the pistons like the manifold are not flat. The, the pistons are not flat but like this shape so you have a better uh, so it uh, the, the 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 fuel air mixture burns better and this okay. is this and they they had to do it and to have the valves from here and from here, so yeah, they could this they can have they could have this shape. So this was the best solution they could get out of their capacities and the money they had in that time, because BMW was quite a small car company in the 1930s. Okay. Interesting. Very very interesting. Look at this. That's the M1 <laughs> engine Pro car spec. Spitting fire. Huh? Yeah, from time to time. And that's, that's the Formula One engine that I told you about. So this is the one that made up to 1400 horsepower, but only for three laps, like in lap, hot lap, and then out lap, and then they swapped the engine back then. Yes, and they used quite some aggressive additives for the fuel. And Someone that's is the asking here, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Someone was asking if there is a 2.5 inline six or if there is an airplane engine somewhere there. No, unfortunately, the airplane engine is in the, our museum. So 
uh, they are pretty hard to maneuver and those engines all need to be maneuvers. You see those boxes in here. Okay. So uh, we have to do a session in the museum sometime. Gotcha. So there's okay. no, and a 2.5 liter, this is not, I don't know if, uh, what kind of ask, um, engine he was asking for, but that's the, that's the M30 inline six. So the big and the big six cylinder yeah. introduced in 68 and then used up to the nineties. Yeah. Good. Cool. All right. Well, I don't want to okay. keep you too long either. I know you, you've been talking for like an hour and a half almost now, or like over an hour. Oh, uh, why do don't you interrupt anything? me? Did we miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Was there anything else that we missed? I don't think so. Uh, I said us. We have a few I said us there too, right? Good deck. Oh, the one thing that you didn't show, but we'll do it next time. It's the, uh, I don't think people realize that there is an uh, electric car that was made by BMW in the 70s. Yeah, the O2, the 1600 Electro. In yeah. fact, we did two of them. Two of them, yeah. Yeah, I guess this yeah. is a cool spot. Yeah. That's the, oh, yeah, exactly. You can see from the back. That's the gallery. Yeah. No, the O2, so, in fact, this mm -hmm. is uh, a car that we built two of them for the Olympics to be to guide the marathon mm -hmm. championships mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But yeah, that's the thing for another, because it's not here at the moment. It's in the museum, as we have a special exhibition in the museum about uh, urban mobility, electric mobility. And as this is one of the very first electric cars from BMW, uh, this is showcased there. Well, very cool, very cool. Well, Ben, this was amazing. Um, let me ask you this before we let you go. So when you open up, do you offer public tours like every day? Uh, no, in the classic department, we have tours every Friday and Saturday. Okay. Friday afternoons. So you can join them. You can check the, 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 the homepage of uh, BMW Welt and BMW Museum. You can check the guided tours section and then you can book it. We are, re we, in the next weeks, we will try to reestablish those ones. So we will reopen the classic and the museum on Tuesday, in fact, we are allowed okay. to do so. Mm -hmm. So this is the first step and then we will establish the guided tours afterwards because it, it took us really by surprise on next, last Tuesday, this Tuesday, it took us by surprise that we are allowed to open next Tuesday. So we made everything work and just like to get up the museum working and all that stuff again. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, we will be open on Tuesday, um, following Tuesday, next Tuesday. Same goes with the classic. The Weld will reopen a few days later and then tours will be available hopefully soon. Gotcha. Very yes. interesting. Well, Ben, thank you so much. This was amazing. Hopefully we can do this live when we get to Munich again. And I, I look forward to some more media drives. I know I wasn't able to come last year, but my guy had a lot of fun there and I was kind of jealous of all the cars that he, he actually got to drive. So hopefully you reestablish those and we can go back to somewhat normal and do some cool stuff. But um, We'll find something. A... If you come back to Munich, we'll find something for you to drive. I'm sure about for that. Sure. And, sure. <laughs> and you too, Nate, exactly. Hey, I, I'm a motorsports guy, so if you, you got some big strings to pull. <laughs> okay, so we still got some time left, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Ben, I hope you're having a great weekend. I hope to see you, you too, soon. Guys. Always a Make pleasure best. seeing you. Same to you. Appreciate Thank it. You so Thank much, you. Man. Take care. Bye, Enjoy. guys. Bye-bye.